is a big deal if you tap somebody who uh, ranks higher than you. Doesn't matter. Oh boy, is it is it a big deal if you tap someone who is higher ranked than you? Man. Yeah, say your blue belt or you tap a purple belt. Is it a big deal or who cares? Well, I'll tell you what. We're, you have to go by the perspectives. Is it a big deal to the person sitting on the bench over there? Maybe. Maybe they're not watching at all. Is it a big deal to the coach? Probably not. You think that it is, but it's not. Is it a deal to the other people in the room? Maybe. Is it a deal to the one that caught the purple belt? Oh, hell yeah. It's a big deal. It's the biggest deal in the world. The you world. Should it be a big deal? It shouldn't be a big deal at all. But here's the thing. You get the, the rewards maybe necessary when you tap them to believe like fully, full on, have conviction. That, and that allows you to go a little bit further. Because until you get to, to some point like that, you don't really think that you can get them. You think like, man, they're just way better than me. And like, you have these thoughts. But at some point, you have to admit, maybe after you got your purple belt, who knows where, that you started rolling with even good, good people and saying, hey, I might get them this time. They might get me, but I might get them. It's not like they're just going to have an easy time. It's going to be hard. So the upper belt has a perspective that is really um, seasoned. It's really worldly. What I mean by that is they've experienced people come in the door to give them just a little bit of a fight and then totally give up. They've experienced people come in the door, go completely crazy, exhaust and, and give up. They've experienced people come in, go crazy, hold them down, probably maybe tap them out. They've experienced people that are good, uh, just smoke them like just magic. Boom, Billy Blanks here. No, I don't know. Um, I was trying to just think of some random two, three, four things and tapped. That's jujitsu. That's what they do to you from above, black, brown, shooting down. If it's, if it's something where they're just like, hey, I'm just going to snipe a few of these uh, white belts and you're going to get this. Billy Blanks here. Uh, which is to say just some crazy crap, and then you're I, um, the point being, is it a big deal to catch them? Well, the perspective is what matters. Is it a big deal to the coach? Like I said, all the people. To you and to the other person, it, it matters to you. And it might matter to them, but it, probably not. They are probably yeah. um, working in such a way that it, it gives that possibility a chance to exist. Whereas if they chose to, they could just hold you down for sure, for sure. Just hold you down and not let you go anywhere. Just keep you stuck. Even if they're smaller, I can hold you down. If you don't know jujitsu, I can hold you down for sure. It doesn't matter how big you are. If you're a wrestler, that, that's going to be a more difficult road to hoe. But even you will find it way more of a challenge than it should be. Like 10 times more, just like way more of a challenge. That's the power of jujitsu. But we're talking about, does it matter? If the guy, the purple belt, is rolling his top 
level game and you as the blue belt are rolling your top level game and you catch them fair and they're a legit blue belt then they're going to be impressed with you they're going to um learn from that lesson and but they're also going to give it a little bit more so if they were going like 99 percent, then now they're going to go 100 now they're really gonna um get you and this is after you've already become a blue belt and we're talking about guys that know jujitsu so if they if they choose to they can be unaffected like you got them good job like legitimately and then we'll roll again and nothing changed so you got to you know you're getting a whole bunch of different uh reactions here's the one that you're looking for if you roll <clears throat> and do something to outright disrespect them in some way that is tangible, like maybe you use your knee on their face or you put your elbow into their eye or something like that. You <laughs> pull their fingers one at a time. You uh, really manipulate their nose just pull their dang head around which is different than lifting the chin okay that's different you'll know the one when you get it trust me you'll you'll look in the mirror and your nose will be about that big and solid red so that one is a huge deal if you've done that disrespected them or uh, caused them, uh, uh, triggered the bell to go off or, or it just triggered them to like go click to turn on. They weren't on and you trick, you, you triggered them to turn on. You're about to get it. You're about to get it back. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, um, they will feel justified mm -hmm. because you are good. Do you understand? So it's not like they're going to put their knee on your face. Although, you know, if you, you can do this right and not be uh, disrespectful, it's possible, but it's real specific. It's, it's real specific. I wouldn't recommend anybody doing that, especially not to somebody higher ranking than you, or you might just get this. I don't know what that is, but it's a lot of trouble. The machine gun. Yeah. <laughs> or a hammer that you're just hammering nails. Um, it, it, it goes both ways too. If you act like this with somebody lower ranked than you, they don't know the technique to be able to, to cleanly just beat you. And that's what the purple belt will do is, is to turn that technique up as high as they can get it and then just beat you as much as they can. And make it, you know, unachievable so that you know you were beaten. Well, the white belt isn't capable of that. So they're going to do the, everything that they can to try to get to that point, which is maybe squeeze your neck, maybe pull your nose, maybe twist your finger or pull your neck real hard. Go 10 times harder, use all of their energy, but in, in a way that's not, uh, not fun and not productive, but risky and hazardous. So what does this tell you? What matters most is how you treat the tap. If you tap somebody that's higher rank than you, my first response would be you let me get it it would be it wouldn't be oh i got him i got him fair and square not yeah chance. it's like 
maybe this guy's taking it easy. Maybe he's working on something. That's usually my thought. Maybe he, he's a good coach. Maybe he's a good teacher. And he knows what you need. And like, if he thinks you need to take uh, a little bottle of, I just tapped my tire belt friend or, or whoever, then he'll give you a little taste of that. If he thinks that you need, I'm going to turn it up right now, then you'll get a taste of that. So he has the higher ranking, higher ranking person has the ability to do so many different things. It's incredible to play different roles to like as a chameleon, to be aggressive, to be weak, to be strong, to be fast, slow, highly technical, have no technique whatsoever, go hard, go slow. I mean, just like everything to weigh 25 pounds, to weigh 500 pounds, to be like super heavy or not, no weight at all. So they have the same power of, um, you know, I'm going to really make this miserable. I'm going to make you give up as many times as I can or great job. And I'm going to try harder this time because you're good. And I, and, and I want to give you what you deserve, which is just a good role. Your attitude is what will get that. So they catch you. Then this is called being a good training partner. This is your training mentality. And it, it will mean all the difference in the world. If you act like somebody has just killed your puppy every time something doesn't work or every time somebody taps you out or like you can't do a technique right, nobody's going to want to be around you. First of all, you're not going to, you're, you're going to have a tough time getting like, they're like, if they do let you uh, pair up, then it's going to be like, everybody's paired up. And then you got this guy who's like, still got his shoes on or something. You got the guy that's like, trust me, there'll be like a guy over there that's going to be all confused. And that's okay. To, it's okay to help him anyway. But there are times that you want to, you want to do something else and you've earned it. You're whatever, purple, brown, black. So long, long story short, the way that you approach these people in jiu-jitsu in general will determine whether you are one of them or one of their enemies. And I say enemies in that not in the circle, the circle of jiu-jitsu. Inside the circle of jiu-jitsu, we want every single person that we can get until they prove to us that they're not uh, a member. They're not in the circle. They prove it and they push themselves out. Well, if you, if you pull fingers and hurt people, do you think we want you in that circle? Do you think that we would want a friend like that? Or is that person showing us that they're our enemy? They're demonstrating they're our enemy. Whether we're their best friend or friend, whatever, they're, we're enemies. They're going to hurt you. So you either tap them rel relentlessly, explain to them that, um, you know, you were working on something and could we roll again? I want to be able to give you a better look at, at it. Third, depending on where you are in your journey, Say nothing. Just, just be like, you got me. Cool. And then keep going. Don't say anything, whether they got you fair and square or not. But that's a whole other story. Here's what you won't say. Mother. You know the word. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh. I wasn't expecting that. How? Did you catch me? Son of a. Son of a. 
throw my belt down. Well, guess what? The other guy's thinking, of course I was going to get you. Of course I caught you. What are you acting like that for? You act like I shouldn't have got uh, caught you. Is that really the coolest thing in the world? No, you should be like, yeah, of course you got me. Jiu-Jitsu is awesome. That is your yep. training mentality. That is the way that you approach roles. Be like that in your jujitsu classes. And before you know it, you're Billy Blanks here. <laughs> and that's it for this episode. <laughs> 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 <laughs>